Namaste. So in the last couple of episodes, Shankarachar is describing the mechanism of enlightenment. How does it actually occur? And basically he says that when one contemplates the Mahavakya, the great Vedic saying, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, this leads to a moment of unanalyzable mentation, he calls it. The Sanskrit word is vritti, which means a mental modification. So in other words, the mind changes, the consciousness changes. And how does it change? Well, it goes away. <laughs> to be replaced by awareness of I am as Brahman. Hmm? This is the unanalyzable momentary mentation or vritti, mental modification that allows self-realization, facilitates self-realization. After that, you know, mind is mind, body is body, stuff is stuff, but I am Brahman. So just like in this world, you know, there's real money and then there's phony money, counterfeit or, you know, fraud or, you know, any of those forms of something masquerading as value when it's actually not. Well, the material world is full of stuff like that. Um, there are also false liberations. And Shankaracharya mentions seven different kinds. So <laughs> I'm giving the summary before the reading because the reading is quite, you know, complicated and I want you to have the background going into it. So what are the seven kinds of false liberation? They are non-eternal or impermanent liberation, liberation as a product of meditation, puja, etc. Liberation as transformation of something or other, or liberation as an acquisition. Lord Shiva gave so-and-so liberation. Or, you know, from the yogic point of view, an attainment, something that is done, something that is a result of work, whether it's by purification or rituals or whatever a form of addition or subtraction from what or to what. <laughs> we'll discuss all of these as we go. And finally, an uncovering or revelation of something. These are all false concepts of liberation. Why are they false? In general, they assume that liberation is the result of work. And since Brahman can never be the object of anything, especially mundane work, huh? dualistic action, huh? that makes a distinction between the doer, the object, and the action. Just like consciousness makes a distinction between the seer, the seen, and the act of seeing. So in the same way, we misunderstand liberation when we consider it a product of duality or having the nature of duality or being an object or being a result of any kind. We miss the point because liberation is the absolute. Therefore, there can be no question of liberation becoming impermanent, for in it is revealed the reality of the eternally free self, after eliminating from the self the idea of its being under the bondage of birth and death, fancied on it through ignorance. But from the standpoint of one who believes that liberation is a product, 
It is but logical that there should be a dependence on activity, mental, vocal, and physical. The position becomes the same if liberation be a transformation of something. From either point of view, liberation must of necessity be impermanent, for neither curd, that is a modification, nor a jar, that is a product, is seen to be permanent in this world. And no dependence on work can be proved by assuming liberation to be a thing to be acquired, for it being essentially one with one's very self, there can be no acquisition. Even if Brahman be different from oneself, there can be no acquisition, for Brahman being all-pervasive like space, it remains ever attained by everybody. Liberation cannot also be had through purification, so as to be dependent on action. Purification is achieved either through the addition of some quality or removal of some defect. As to that, purification is not possible here through the addition of any quality, since liberation is of the very nature of Brahman, on which no excellence or deterioration can be effected. Nor is that possible through the removal of any defect, for liberation is of the very nature of Brahman that is ever pure. Opponent May it not be that though liberation is inherent in oneself, it remains covered, and it becomes manifest when the self is purified by action, as the brilliance of a mirror does when cleaned by the act of rubbing? Vedantin. No. Since the self cannot reasonably be the sphere of any action, for no action can take place without bringing about some change in its locus. But if the self changes through action, it will be subject to impermanence, and that will militate against such texts as it is said to be immutable, Bhagavad Gita 2.25. And that is undesirable. Hence, the self can have no action occurring on itself, and action taking place on something else cannot purify the self, which is not an object thereof. Shankara lays down the wrap. He drops the mic. Get it. Huh? Get it in your soul. Because these different forms of false liberation are sold everywhere as the real thing. We already went over the real thing huh, in the last couple of episodes. And now he's talking about the counterfeit, the replacement uh, <laughs> of inferior quality. And, of course, that does not bring full satisfaction. So people are left wandering around saying, well, geez, I did everything it said in that book, or I did everything the guru told me, you know, but I'm still not satisfied. I'm still not complete. I still feel like I have to run around and chase around and do this and do that or learn something more or whatever it is to gain or acquire or uh, uncover or deserve to be revealed uh, the real secret of liberation. Duh. No. Because Brahman is already everything, eternally. It is the self of all. So Brahman is already realized. And the proof of it is, consider the question, do you exist? Of course, everybody's going to say, yes, of course I exist. How do you know? See, this is the unanalyzable mentation, the vritti that Shankaracharya is talking about. The fact that we know that we exist, a priori, without any need for evidence, and it's totally convincing. There is no doubt that I exist. 
and you exist. Is there? <laughs> well, if you don't exist, please don't watch this video. <laughs> But see, the absurdity of it is, even though the self is already Brahman, has always been Brahman, and is simply apparently covered over by upadis, like the human body or like the mind or, you know, so many others, we tend to assume that that's, that object is the self the body-mind, you know, and its life is real and composed of real actions in a real world. When, in fact, if we examine these things closely, we find they are all impermanent. So how can they be liberation, or how can they lead to liberation, or how can they serve as a foundation for liberation? Liberation needs no support. Liberation is already our nature. But because of, of wrong culture, of wrong education, misunderstanding, especially misunderstood terminology, uh, the terminology, our, our language for dealing with the topic of being is very much, you know, limited, crippled even. You know, uh, we have to import Sanskrit terms to talk about it at all, isn't it? <laughs> because Western thought simply is not there. Western thought is based on duality. So they will always be chasing their tail, looking for the thing that makes them complete when they're already complete. And this is true also of those who think that the path, the spiritual progress, is accomplished by work of any kind. Yes, maybe there is some value in purifying the mind and body, certainly, to make them more fit vehicles uh, for this realization. But, you know, that's not the liberation itself. That's not the enlightenment itself. That's only the preparation so that you can tolerate it because it's very heavy energy, very strong energy. So, yeah, you have to be in good physical and mental condition. And what that means, you know, as far as the mental part, is studying the authentic scriptures deeply going into them, not just watching the video for some entertainment, you know, some cheap thrills. Woo, he said Upadis again. Wow. No, come on. But after the video, you should sit down, look into yourself, and simply recognize this astonishing thing that I know that I am. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti. Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>